guy's asking two hundred dollars for this thing. Yeah. And then I, then I showed him pictures of my grill that I'm selling for one fifty, and I'm like, I do these grills so that some seventy year old woman who just lost her husband can fire up this grill today on the way home and grill. She doesn't have to clean it. She doesn't have to do anything to it. So is an extra fifty dollars worth it for that woman? Absolutely. So screw. Up. Hey everyone, I'm here today with Sean Duggan. He is a moderator on the Weber Q Facebook page. Sean, how many Weber Qs do you have at this time? Uh, last count, I have about 40. 40 Weber Qs. Why do you have so many Weber Qs? Uh, I originally got one back when they first came out in the States here in 2004. I had it for many years and my sister and my dad both needed grills last year when the pandemic hit. I said, hey, I'll find you a couple Weber Qs found them and then they backed out of them so I said what am I going to do with these oh, I'll just clean them up and you know see what happens and I ended up selling them and I found more and refinished those and sold more and it wow. became a cycle where do you find most of these grills most of them Facebook marketplace uh, Craigslist so what would you say is the number one problem why are people getting rid of their Weber Qs for so cheap I think it's a lot of things I think when the pandemic first hit people were looking around for things to sell because sometimes both people in the family lost their jobs. So saying, hey, what about that old grill in the corner? Just get whatever you can for it, 20, 30 bucks. So I got a bunch at that point. Then when the pandemic money came, they said, let's buy a new grill. So people sold even more of them. So wow. they were just giving away. And again, in the Weber Q Facebook group, we have people from all over the world, Australia, New yeah, Zealand, yeah. and they're, they're amazed that you know the, the fact that we can sometimes pick up grills free here for twenty dollars is that paying two or three hundred dollars a pop over yeah. there for used grills so maybe you can tell me about the different types of Weber Q's and walk me through them because there's some here that I have never even seen before so let's, right. let's do that let's take a look this one here is just a probably a 200 series uh, but it's on just a nicer cart you know this is the uh, uh, it's not a collapsible cart so this is for a grill that's not really gonna move yeah, I have that card for my uh, 2200. Yep. This is the Char Q. They made these, uh, I think, from 2008 to 2011. Uh, and they were made for charcoal, obviously. Uh, didn't sell very well, um, but they're hard to find because they only made them for four years. This is probably a two, 2200 uh, with the inset thermometer that's already in there uh, in the electric ignition so all right what do we got next <laughs> this is probably a 200 the single grade um, old school collapsible cart this one here is one that I did in my uh, high school colors I'm a football coach and uh, we grill at football camp for the coaches so I made this we're matte black and like this harvest gold kind of thing and I did this as a something kind of fun the custom card cool let's go down to the uh, to the big one here what are we looking at here uh, this is a family Q or the Q 300 3000 3200 uh, this has two burners this is not portable uh, it comes with this uh, cart this gets bolted into that. This doesn't collapse. Um, it's, it's basically uh, a full-size grill that is modeled after the Q as opposed to getting a Genesis or a Spirit. So th they're amazing grills. The first one I ever got, I got for free. And uh, I'm, I'm still amazed at people giving away these grills. They're $400 a piece, so they're awesome grills. I always, I always laugh when I see these. The, uh, the upside down handle. We'll just put the handle on upside down. Just a Weber Q geek joke. Sometimes they put these handle spacers on the inside. Doesn't do anything. Tell us about some of these different carts, because a lot of these carts I haven't seen before. And I know there's there look like some old school ones, some newer ones. Uh, most of these are old school. Um, this is their first collapsible cart. Uh, it all folds down into itself if you want to take it camping or tailgating or to the beach. Uh, then they came up with this second style here. 
Weber medallion on there. This card here is a stays on the on the on the deck kind of card. Doesn't collapse. It's more stable. This card is the one that comes with the family queue. Uh, that does not collapse. Right. Another reason why I have so many grills is that if I get a grill that needs a part, the new parts from Weber can be pretty expensive. I mean the the side tables are thirty-five dollars a piece. The regulators are sixty-plus dollars a piece. Uh, the carts are about a hundred dollars a piece. So I end up looking for um, another used grill just to get a single part. And a lot of times you can find these grills here with you know a grill, a cart, a cover, sometimes the adapter hose for a hundred dollars. Nice. So now I have an extra grill, and I'm just going to pick and pull parts off. Nice. When the pandemic hit last year. Uh, that's when I picked up my family queue, and I had a an old griddle, one of the first ones they put out for the uh, original queue, the 200 series, and I started cooking breakfast on that, so I wasn't cooking in the house, so I was cooking basically three meals a day for three months outside. It was great because I could make a mess out there, it wasn't getting splattered all over my kitchen. I taught my nine-year-old son how to cook a hamburger. I taught my 52-year-old brother how to make a hamburger. So uh, not only did I keep my kitchen clean, but I helped my son with a lifelong skill and helped my brother <laughs> with uh, a skill so that he can cook the burgers and I can just drink beer. If you think the baby queue is too small, they're not. You can have a baby queue for two to three people. That's my actually my most used grill. I always thought that they were too small until I actually got one for free and started using it. And I'm like, oh my God, this thing is amazing. Yeah, and they're, they're good on gas too. They're amazing on gas. You know? So I basically use the size of the grill based on the food that I'm having. I have on my deck right outside my kitchen, I have a baby queue, I have a 200 series, and I have a family queue. So based on what I'm cooking, I just pick out which grill I'm going to use. And I just use that. So it's awesome. This was the grill that, the color of the grill that started the whole channel. <laughs> what else we got here? Well, this lid here actually, see the hole there? Yeah. And the hole on the top. I did a little experiment because people are like, what happens if you put the, the thermometer in the front versus the thermometer at the top? And uh, I had this lid that was cracked. Weber replaced it for free. So I had this, gonna throw it away instead. Put one here, put one here. The thermometer on the top was about 20 degrees hotter than the thermometer in the front of the grill. So, um, if you're cooking stuff, just know that there is some sort of variance um, in the temperature, so. Interesting. Yeah. This is another 3200. Yeah. I got this for free. You got this one for free? For free. <laughs> Can't beat that. Nope. We got a 2200. Yep. What one is this? Baby Q, probably a 100 series. Let's look here, let's see. Yep, single grate, it's probably a 100 series. If you look at this lid inside here, this is how I'd refinish them if I was going to do it to resell it. People say like, oh, you're taking all the taste off. It's like, that's okay, because if someone's paying a premium price for it, they're gonna want it to be fresh from the factory. So let me get my helper here to show you the grills that I brought today. This blue one here, I recently found at a transfer station, which is another word for the dump. Someone was throwing this out in the metal area. I saw it there and I picked it up. I thought it looked like it was in pretty good shape. And the grill next to that is my old green Weber Q that I painted flat black. And we're going to do something special with that today. You're a gas grill guy. You ever use charcoal? Uh, I am 51 years old and I'm somewhat embarrassed to say that I've never cooked with charcoal in my entire life. But uh, I will be in short order. Uh, a friend of mine moved to North Carolina, gave me that, I think it's a performer kettle. And then I saw this other one here, I saw someone made it a table. So they took out the, the grill grate 
they put wood in there and they made it like a little prep table for condiments and stuff so I'm like I'm gonna do that but uh, someone's like yeah maybe you want to try doing the charcoal on that first before you use that big one or you use the Weber Smoky Mountain that I picked up or one of these char cues. so I'm gonna get there and uh, I'm gonna get there I promise